hit pause, pans down, um, saves some laptop battery as well because you won't need it for the next little bit. Though I hope, as a concept, this will not be too difficult and we'll be able to do it quite quickly because everything we know in integration is based on the things we know from differentiation. And that's pretty fresh, at least, I hope. So here are the three derivatives we were just looking at before. And all I'm going to do is take each of these and integrate them with respect to x. However, there are a couple of things worth noting. I'm not going to do any of the chain rule versions of these because they really are the same thing, just with some extra terms caught in there. And um, I'm going to give you something that I hope will be helpful later on. So, I mean, this literally was what I wrote down 10 minutes ago. I haven't changed the order, so can you help me remember which of these is which? First one? Tan inverse, because that was the first one that we learned to differentiate. But of course, because we're integrating, I should include the constant of integration. OK, because remember, there's a whole family of all of these moved up and down that will all have the same derivative. OK, happy times. Second one we did, sine inverse. Same deal with our constant of integration. And at this point, I'm going to pause. Now, you already know, because you're like, well, we did tan inverse, we did sine inverse. I guess I know what the last one is, OK? But you need to stop for a second, recognizing the fact that the difference between these two things here, by the way, that thing in blue, the thing being integrated, do you know what that's called? It has a name? Uh, you don't have to know it, but it helps you actually talk about what's going on. That thing in there, it's called the integrand, the thing being integrated. Now, the integrand from example two to example three, all that's different is what? It's just that negative, right? <laughs> You've got to be careful when you're like, it's just the sign. Wait, which sign? It's the fact that there's a negative, not a positive, right? Now, not only that there's a negative, but this negative, because of its place, not all negatives can be, um, can have the thing that I'm about to do done to them, because you'll see why in a minute. This particular negative, I could just as easily factor outside of the integral, right? Like, we could do that with any constant up here. Negative 1 in the numerator is just a constant I can divide out. Now, hold on a second. You were all pretty convinced we were about to write cos inverse here, but now what would you feel like I ought to write based on the previous line? Now, hold up a minute. This seems weird. Like, how can you just turn it into a different thing? Well, the answer is, I haven't turned it into a different thing. I've just dressed it up in different clothes, in exactly the same way that I hope that you would recognize that as the same as this, right? Same thing, different clothes, OK? This is the same as cos inverse. And my graphs over here will help us see it, right? Here's cos inverse, it's the second graph, OK? Negative sine inverse is this, but upside down, right? That's what putting a minus sign out the front does. So if I get rid of this so that we can draw on it a bit more clearly, let's put that same thing in, but we'll draw it upside down. Starts up the top instead of the bottom, and then it arcs down, it continues like so. Now that sure does look familiar. What's the difference between this graph, the green one, and this one? It's just a vertical shift, right? Which is captured in here. That's all that plus c does. These are in the same family. They are the same function. It's just that you will end up with a different constant of integration if you had some values to determine what it ought to be. Does this make sense? Now, two things that I want to highlight before I then set you back to work. I told you, that was it. Not complicated, right? Once you know how to differentiate stuff, you can integrate. The first thing I will say is, Wow, this looks like it's a recipe for disaster, right? Because today, this is all nice and fresh and recent, and you're like, I, I know what these all look like, and you even have it written in the order that will help you remember the order that we did it in, right? But if I got rid of all this, I jumbled it up, changed some coefficients a little bit, of course it's pretty easy to confuse all of these things. They look remarkably similar, OK? So here are my two uh, things to make you feel better, I hope, OK? If these look annoyingly similar, Spare a thought for your friends in extension 2 who don't just need to know how to integrate these. They also need to know how to integrate this. They also need to know how to integrate this. They also need to know how to integrate, hold on, 
I always forget because there are so many. Oh, that's right. Uh, this one here, I should have put my dx there, x squared minus 1. Do you remember how I said, oh look, this minus sign on the numerator, you can just factor that out, no problems. There's a minus sign here on this part, but you cannot just pull that out because it's underneath the square root, right? Not to mention, they also need to know how to integrate this. So if you felt like it was bad, that you had to be able to tell these three apart, I promise it's not that bad, okay? The second thing I want to say is we give you this massive leg up. And back when I did the HSC, we didn't have this. We had something much simpler. I don't know how much time you spend looking at the reference sheet, okay? Let's be really clear. The reference sheet is supposed to be a crutch. How many of you have used crutches before, like for a significant period of time? Yeah, what did you have? What did you injure? Okay, that's fine. Anyone else? Like a broken ankle or toe or something? What did you get? You know what crutches do, right? They help you out. They help you do something you couldn't otherwise, but they also slow you down. If you're like healthy and all of your muscles are working, using crutches slows you down and the reference sheet is exactly the same. If you cannot remember, like use it. That's what it's there for, right? But if you can remember, if you can put the work in to know this stuff without having to consult so that you can tell them apart, then you don't feel the time penalty of going to look and where is the thing and all of that kind of thing, right? Now, let's just quickly have a look. You've got to all, go all the way through page one, through page two, and then we get to page three. All of the calculus is here. Now, have a look. We will recognize some of this. Let's stay on the differential calculus side for a minute. So, ta-da, sine inverse, cos inverse, tan inverse. You'll notice that they've got it written in the chain rule form, so there's all those f of x's and so on. So you literally wrote that down just 10 minutes ago. Then, if you have a look on the right hand side, so that's where all the integrals are, right? There are the two integrals that we're interested in, right? So the thing you'll notice is first, okay, there's tan inverse, which you've seen. There's sine inverse, and you tell me why there's no cos inverse. It's, it's because of this thing, right? It's because actually it's just a constant coefficient of difference, right? So you could just as easily, this, this answer here, if you see this form, you could just as easily write this as negative cos inverse f of x, you just have some different constant. Does this make sense? So if you're like panicking, because they it's true, they really do all look similar, and when you're under exam pressure, yada, 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 it's easy to mistake them. Um, go here if you're not sure, or Go ahead, do the question, and then when you're doing checking, come back, put this next to it, and you're like, yeah, did I use the right one? Thumbs up, okay? Was there anything else worth adding while we were looking at this? I feel like there was one thing else I wanted to say. Hmm. No, that's mostly okay. Yeah, Isaac. You're talking about this number here? Ah, okay. So, I was going to get to this. You're actually going to encounter this in the exercise, okay? When you put in sine inverse of some function, right? Uh, where did my right? Here it is. Okay. So if I were to differentiate sine inverse of some function like so, okay? Remember, this function could be anything. I gave you a simple algebraic one before, but you could put an exponential in there. You can put uh, a trig function in there, like sine inverse of sine or sine inverse of cos. All the rules, rules still work the same, right? But one of the most common things that you will get, the most common sort of chain rule that you will create is something that looks like this, where a is some sort of constant. It's just the number 3, 4, negative 1, whatever. Okay? Now, I want you to follow along with me. I need some space here. You might want to jot this down, actually, so I'm glad you asked the question. Just need a bit of room here. This is just a special version of the chain rule. When I say special, I mean it's a version of the chain rule, but it just happens a lot. So because it happens so frequently, they're like, let's, let's pay special attention to this one, right? If this is our f of x, I just dropped it off, but you've gotten written there, right? What's our derivative going to look like? What's on the numerator? It's, it's f dash, which in this case is 1 over a, because it's just a constant, right? So I've got fractions on fractions here, so I'm going to write those in brackets just to make it super clear what's dividing what. Okay, now to the denominator. What do we got down here? This is sine inverse, so I should have a one take away. Okay, here comes the f of x, all squared. Fantastic. Okay, 
So this checks out. Now, by the way, you've done the hard part. You've differentiated and it was inverse trig, thumbs up, okay? But hopefully, if you're looking at this like I am, you can see there's some real simplifying we can do here that will make it look much, much nicer, right? Fractions on fractions, we can do better than this, right? What should I do to the top and the bottom to get rid of these fractions? Multiplying by a would do it. Now, some of you, I heard you say squared, right? Because there is going to be an a squared on that denominator. But look carefully, that a squared on the denominator is underneath a square root, right? So watch. Let's go ahead and do this together. Let's multiply the top and the bottom by a. Numerator is going to be? That's not so hard. On the denominator, right, a multiplying by a is the same as multiplying by the square root of a squared. At least in this context, it is, right? Uh, just be careful. Strictly speaking, that's actually the absolute value of a. But in this context, I've already got sine all covered. It's fine, OK? What's going to happen underneath the square root? This 1 is being multiplied by a squared. And then in here, look carefully. I'm doing a couple of things at once, which I know is cheeky. This is x squared on a squared. Do you agree? x squared on a squared. So when you multiply by this, bam, it's gone. That's nice, isn't it? Like that's that there, that looks quite nice and simple. And so you can see, can you recognize? That's what's going on here, this a squared minus f of x all squared. It's not really a different thing. They've just kind of done a couple of lines of algebra to get rid of fractions, OK? All right, excellent. Um, I remembered the thing that I was going to say, except I then rubbed it off. Remember those things that I told you about where it's like, oh my goodness, the extension 2 people have so many more things to, that look very similar that they also have to learn how to integrate? Two issues with that. Number one, their integrals are nowhere on here. <laughs> they don't get them on the reference sheet. Uh, basically, the decision was made was like, OK, if you're into extension 2, you're on your own. Good luck, OK? That's the first thing. The second thing is, at least all of these turn into inverse trig. They all turn into inverse trig of some kind of variety, right? Not that you could tell without learning it, but this, this actually turns into a pair of fractions, algebraic fractions. The one that looked like this, square root of 1 plus x squared, this turns into a log of some kind. And then I can keep on going. They're like all weird and wonderful varieties. That's why you don't have to go anywhere near them, because we're in inverse trig land. You've learned all the inverse trig derivatives and integrals. Okay?